This coming week, students across the country will walk out of classes to demand action on gun control. It's momentum like we've never seen in this country after a school shooting. Even lawmakers in Florida, where Republicans control both the House and Senate, passed gun and school safety reform after 17 people were shot to death at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. But not everyone was on board with that. One of the lawmakers who voted against those new laws explained her opposition in this way. We've been told that we need to listen to the children and do what the children ask. Are there any children on this floor? Are there any children making laws? Do we allow the children to tell us that we should pass a law that says no homework? Or you finish high school at the age of 12 just because they want it so? No. The adults make the laws because we have the age, we have the wisdom, and we have the experience. So a similar sentiment was shared in this USA Today editorial titled, Parkland Kids Can Protest But They Don't Know What They're Talking About. In it, the author writes, the simple fact is that young people are not, as a group, better informed, wiser, smarter, or even more enlightened than older people. I mean, that's usually true, right? Wisdom comes with age. But the kids who that lawmaker in Florida and that USA Today columnist said are not old enough, not wise enough to contribute to the gun control debate, those are the same kids who will be considered old enough and wise enough to buy an AR-15 rifle in a year or two. How can we consider an 18-year-old mature enough to own a gun, but not mature enough to be part of a debate over that gun? And here's what really gets me about people dismissing the voice of teenagers in all of this. How often do we complain about their apathy? How often do we moan about the time they spend with their faces buried in their phones, their bizarre obsession with the Kardashians, or their inability to pay attention to what's actually happening in the world around them? So once they finally do, when they finally find something they care enough about to speak up and pay attention, what, we dismiss them? We call them uninformed and unenlightened and inexperienced? No one says lawmakers have to do exactly what these kids are telling them to do. No one says they have the perfect solution. But do we? Do the adults? With all of our age and experience and wisdom, what have we done to solve the problem so far? What is the harm in listening, in adding another voice to the conversation, even if that voice is a teenager's? After all, they're the ones being shot to death at school.